We are teaching today on embryology. Embryology. Embryo. Embryology. This is the study of life at the embryonic stage. You know, life in your womb, in the womb of a woman. I want to put it in very simple terms that everyone can understand. How does a baby form in the womb of a woman? Yes, when a man and a woman they have sexual intercourse, and the man supplies good sperms, and the woman has ovulated, the sperm and the egg in the woman, they meet and fuse together. They form what is called a fertilized egg or a zygote, because we call a fertilized egg a zygote. How does a zygote develop into an embryo? How does an embryo develop into a fetus? And we now know that a fetus is the baby in the womb. But that baby in the womb has structures like the umbilical cord linking the baby to the placenta. It has the placenta itself. What is the placenta? The baby is swimming in fluid inside the womb. Where is this fluid coming from? We call it amniotic fluid. That is why I want to draw the attention of us who are interested in knowing how baby is formed in a womb of a woman before it grows and develops and is born after nine months. Our interest now is that life in at the embryonic stage. I start by indicating a structure of a sperm cell and that of an egg. Remember, the egg cell is round but has a nucleus in the center, that's like the heart of it. But the sperm cell has a head, a body, and a tail. But the nucleus is only in the head. Yet the head of the, the sperm has a protective covering we refer to as the acrosome. When sperm cell meets the egg, just the meeting, just the head of the baby touching the wall of the cell membrane of the egg, you know, there's some stimulation that causes the secretion of an enzyme that is referred to as uh, hyaluronidase. Hyaluronidase. This enzyme digests this acrosome on the head of the sperm cell. You know, it digests it and allows the nucleus on the head of the sperm cell to cross and enter into the egg cell and fuse with the nucleus of the egg you see that enzyme digests the, the cell membrane and the acrosome at the head of the baby permitting the nucleus from the head of the, 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 the from the head of this stem cell to cross and enter inside the egg the egg remains the same size but now my dear brothers and sisters the sperm is no more the nucleus alone has entered there the remaining part of the stem cell remains outside because it will degenerate and is going to be reabsorbed into the system and used as food to provide energy. Okay? But this cell now remaining round is now fertilized because the nucleus inside is fused. So it's not like it's a whole stem cell and that is inside the whole egg. No. One of the interests of this lesson is to see how an, a fertilization takes place. What actually comes from the sperm and enter into the egg? Now this egg is said to be fertilized. So this egg now is called zygote. Zygote. A zygote now after fertilization begins a series of cell division. Okay, that the nucleus inside begins to multiply first into two, then into four, then the structure begins to grow and, and, and increase in size. Or, and you, you begin to find, you know, into two, into four, then four doubles into eight, eight doubles to sixteen, sixteen doubles to thirty-two, thirty-two doubles, just like that until after some time you find a thick, round structure. We refer to this one now as a morula. A morula. M O R U. L A Morula. Now, after this, this Morula grows 
transforms into another structure round but these cells that are just a compact begin to differentiate themselves according to their functions some of them shift to the periphery to form two layers two layers round these layers round these two layers form what they call the trophoblast 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 okay yet the rest of the cells from the moral layer they they compact or gather on one side you know they gather on one side inside inside the structure since the protective cells have already formed all around the rest compact themselves and gather on one side like you see on this structure and one other side of it is standing as an empty chamber a vacuum filled with fluid a vacuum filled with fluid then you then see the structure the entire structure here is now known as the blastosis 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 so you see a blastosis is made up of what the trophoblast which is this outer layer then this compact of cells that have gathered on one side which we call it the inner inner cell mass inner cell mass so you see the vacuum, this one that has water fluid standing there, is known as the vacuum. Okay? It's a vacuum. This whole structure is a morula that has developed into this. And now you find many parts the trophoblast, the inner cell mass, the vacuum. The whole structure is now known as the blastosis. Where then does the placenta come from? The placenta develops from the outer layer of the trophoblast. Remember, the trophoblast is made of two layers. The outer layer now starts shooting, forming shoots, just like the shoots of a plant, like branches or roots of a tree on the ground. The outer layer of the trophoblast forms this, which we refer to as coronic villi. While this is happening, the fertilized egg is moving along the fallopian tube and locating the womb, okay, the uterine cavity of the woman, because that's where you have manure, you can describe it as manure. That's why you have a decidual lining, which is formed, thick, soft, that is receptive, where all the structure will implant inside, what we call implantation. It can only take place inside the uterine cavity, but the fertilization usually takes place inside the fallopian tube. When it takes place, the fertilized egg takes a journey and begins to come back looking for the, the, the inner lining of the womb, which is comfortable and, and prepared to receive it. By the time this coronic villa starts forming, this structure of blastosis is said to be in the uterine cavity. It's no more in the tube. If anything delays this, fat, this egg, this process in the fallopian tube until this coronic villa starts forming, the coronic villi will anchor, they will hook on the walls of the fallopian tube and then the, the pregnancy is implanted in the fallopian tube, which is wrong side. They call that kind of pregnancy ectopic pregnancy. No woman will want to have an ectopic pregnancy, meaning the pregnancy is planted outside the uterine cavity. And in most cases, it is implanted in the fallopian tube. That is an ectopic pregnancy. But we expect that by the time coronary villi are formed, this whole blastosis is already in the uterine cavity. So these roots, this villi will hook inside there and then they bore, they dig and enter and hook there. They cannot move again. And that's why the pregnancy is now implanted in the womb. And that structure that starts with forming coronary villi, it develops into what we call the placenta. So you see, the placenta develops from the outer layer of the trophoblast. But then there is an inner layer of the trophoblast. That inner layer of the trophoblast is called the chorion. 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 But you see, the inner cell mass inside, plus the vacuum, it has an outer layer too. The inner cell mass has an outer layer too. The outer layer of the inner cell mass is called the amnion. Amnion. As this structure grows, the amnion, which is the outer layer of the inner cell, it grows outward 
and attaches itself to the chorion. And the chorion is the inner layer of the trophoblast. The two layer, the two membranes, amnion and chorion, they grow together. They, they knit themselves together and forming what we call fetal membranes. Anytime they call the word fetal membrane, there are two layers. Even if a woman has given birth, the placenta comes out. When you take the placenta, you find the sheet, the, the, the membranes at the end of the body of the placenta. When you go and neatly separate, you notice that there are two sheets. One is amnion, one is chorion. And that double sheet is what we call fetal membrane. This is how it forms. But the two membranes come from two different origins. Chorion comes from trophoblast, but amnion comes from inner cell mass. My dear brothers and sisters, how then does the baby form? Baby forms from the inner cell mass. The compact of cells that gather on one side, that we call it the inner cell mass, which is surrounded by the amnion. These thick cells here, they throw themselves into two main layers. The inner cell mass throws itself into two main layers called the endodem and the ectodem. Then, then there's a space between the two main layers. That space in the middle is now called the mesodem. So you see, it now makes three layers of endodem, mesodem, and ectodem. This is how, as days pass, they begin to form the endodem, the internal organs of human begin to form from the endodem. The mesodem, you begin to find a tract like an alimentary canal from your mouth through your intestine to the anus, they form from the mesodem. Then the ectodem forms the skin where you have the butts of the hands and the legs they will shoot from. And that is how it forms. While this vacuum with fluid continue to develop with more fluid, because that is the origin of amniotic fluid, and as the the, the, the baby grows inside here, the amnion, which is the amniotic membrane, begins to secrete more and more of the fluid. We call the fluid amniotic fluid. Even when the baby will fully formed and its organs are formed, the kidneys of the baby will start practicing how to form urine. And when they start forming urine, they begin to act it into the, into the amniotic fluid. So the baby is swimming inside. While the baby, the fetus is growing inside the womb, you know, it feels just like fish in the sea. And so it is very hard when there is enough, just enough fluid. And this fluid should range between 500 mils to about 1,500 mils, milliliters. If it is less than 500 mils, baby will not drive well inside it. If it is also more than 1,000 mils, we call that kind of situation a polyhydramnos, which is not also good for the health of the fetus growing in the womb. Now, when it is less than 500, we refer it to it as oligohydramnos. My dear brothers, I will be taking another video to teach us what amniotic fluid, the, 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 the sources and the constituents, and teach us the importance of the um, umbilical cord. Some are long, some are short, and teach you about the placenta and the functioning of the placenta. This is what we'll be handling in our next video. My name is Dr. David Ayim. I am a reproductive health expert and I hold a PhD in public health. If you like this video, subscribe to it, share it, like it, make your comments. Maybe I did say something well. We can we can improve upon. Thank you.